Hi everybody and welcome back to another Tommy and Fatal Saint shoutcast. With me is, well, you guessed it, it's Fatal Saint. What's up, man? What's up, Tommy? Nothing much. Uh, time for another VCO Delight game with the uh, proper VCO factions. Fairmark versus US. Oh yeah! Alright, and this time we've got a game from the WMD in-house tournament. Uh, this was, I think, a semi-final or quarter-final game uh, between Sandland and Helping Hands. Um, Sandland, you probably all know, uh, he's featured in so many of our casts, actually. I mean, I don't deliberately pick games that have him in it, even if he is in my clan. Uh, he just seems to find his way into all our casts. Like, we've had him versus Manchurian, we've had him in a 2v2 against Reloaded, and all sorts of games. Yeah, so, I think we have him in two or three games, at least. Yeah, I think this is actually the fourth game he's gonna have been in one of our shoutcasts, so he's so. he's getting he's getting famous off our cast. So we need to start charging or some shit. <laughs> yeah, we should bill all the people in our shoutcast. He's just get a random bill at the end of the month. He's like, what the fuck is this? Shit? <laughs> yeah, just send him an invoice. What, uh, what the fuck is this? PR dip? What the? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, take yeah. this. Free media, exactly. We should get paid for this shit. Um, yeah. But over here we have Helping Hands. Maybe not quite so many people know him, but he is a very good player, level 16 US, so very competent. Um, although I beat him in the tourney. <laughs> um, actually, no, it was 1 1, in fairness. It was 1 1. So, um, yeah, so we're going to be kicking this off. Uh, US starting from the south and Vare from the north. Uh, good old fashioned tournament positions. And we're going to be unpausing from the 7 second mark in 3, 2, 1, unpause. 8, 9, 10. And they're off. And no base buildings yet. No, we got a 4 ES from Helping Hands, so he's probably going to build with like the last engineers or something, I guess. Probably. Now here's my prediction for Sandland. Do I know his build order well enough for this map? I think I do. He's going to build at Vermont Quarters, and he's going to get a bike out, and he's going to have three pyros to go around and cap. He's going to send the bike down to that plus 10 munitions point here down at the south. I bet that's exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> Dude, did you see the idle pyos from Sandland? They were idle for easily two seconds. Oh my god, massive oh my on his god. Part. What are you doing, Sandland? You well, what, what I do see quite a lot of American players doing recently is like half building their barracks and then sending out another unit to pick up the other half when they send the yeah. first guy off to build. I don't think it's very effective, actually. I mean, it kind of looks cool. It kind of looks like you're Korean when you're not, but I mean... I don't I guess think it's it actually time-saving. I'm guessing the whole point of that is that you don't have enough manpower to build the first rifle squad when the battery is complete. So there's, you know, you, you wait for it and then when you calculate, you know, if you got that, that and that many manpower, uh, you build a second half of the barracks and the second it's done, you just push build riflemen and it's, you know, instantly. But I, I don't know if there's much point to it either. Yeah, I... I don't know. I mean, I was talking about this with Seb when I was on Sunday Night Fights um, last week, uh, presenting the semi-finals, and I mean, we were looking at DevM do that, and or was it DevM? No, it was. Uh, I think it was Siberian who did that, and we were just yeah. thinking, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of meh. I don't think it's actually saving any time, but because it actually takes a few seconds for the guys to actually sit down and start breaking out the sandbags before they actually start building the damn thing. So yeah, exactly. They got to sit down and start the animation of building and actually, you know continue on the building yeah uh, exactly I, I don't know if it saves you that much time considering the animation takes a second or so uh, we also we also actually have some you know preemptive sandbags in the bottom right at the medium uh, munitions point you see he built <laughs> some sandbags just by it i guess uh, he's he must have known past. yeah and i think sandland sort of double bluffed him here he went for a volks first so i was actually wrong uh, he went for uh, a volks uh, first so he probably knew he knew that Hans knew what he was going to do, so yeah. that was we probably We had the same thing on the fuel point being capped by our Bioways NGs. Uh, another very strategically placed sandbag, you know, I guess you can take cover from the other side, but it's much harder due to it being like built into the point itself almost. It's so close that you can possibly get, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's all very nice to, to build those weird sandbags. I'm not sure go. how long does one sandbag piece, or is it two? Is it one or two pieces? I, I never know. I think it's two, or is it one? Because it looks like two. There's a little line in the middle. We got some Volks engaging. That's just the one, I think. And my yeah, we have some off. Volks. <laughs> <laughs> alarm, alarm, alarm. Yeah, we have Volks in the middle here. Our first proper engagement is going to be coming up. We have the Volks versus the MG42. And more sandbags like, from hands. 
the rifles were just there on the other side of the head, she could have just run around a corner and gotten into, you know, close fire range really fast. Well, I think he that knows that he knows fire. that there's a second tier one unit out now from Sandland, and yeah. he, he probably he figured that the MG42 was there. Just, yeah, he just figured it out probably. I'm not sure. I didn't have time to put on the fog of war if he saw it or, or I don't think he saw it though. Those engineers took two casualties a little bit needlessly. Not a huge loss, but it's gonna it's gonna hurt a little bit. You know, when you when you lose men so early and you're having to pay for reinforcing when you should be getting out your rifle squads. Yeah, we got another now, these sandbags from Helping Hands on the top fuel harassment here, the medium fuel outside of Sandlands base. Damn, you know, this guy uh, likes his sandbags. Yeah, I, like, I've actually, really like you know, enjoy say, seeing some, you know, it's, it's for me, it's kind of new. I've seen it before, but you, you rarely see it in top tier players. I don't, yeah, I don't see it used this often. He's, no. that Vauxhall is actually running behind him, getting into a good position to chase down these engineers on retreat. I don't think he noticed it in time though, he might have been able to chase down those engineers on retreat, maybe even kill them. Down here back in the middle we have the first Flamer squad popped out, so Sandland very intelligent intelligently had to jump out of that building. Riflemen might even take it, the Riflemen are going to try and take it, who's going to get the building first here? Oh, uh, Ooh, the Vogues get it, that's that's going to be nasty now, uh, all the rifles geez. get suppressed around the corner of the building. Very early retreat there, you know, it's, I guess he's going for a fast triage, nope, supply yards, uh, building right now, he started just a few seconds ago, and another rifle squad on the field, that makes three, so four engineers and three rifles out for helping hands at the moment. That's the power of the 4ES racks, you can you can get that supply out up dangerously quickly, and yeah. he's had control of, uh, he even denied Sandland his own fuel, so Sandland, he's got 75 fuel, enough to take tier 2 quite comfortably and get out the correct counters, but so far he's still sticking in, in tier 1. He's gone for a slightly extended tier 1 in a way with his 3 Pyos and then 2 Volks, 2 MGs, quite standard. 2 Volks, 2 MGs, yeah. We got a first mine out from Helping Hazards as well. Uh, the first one I've seen planted at least, uh, just in front of this church. And he's going to plant another one in the graveyard, but the uh, MG <laughs> is forcing him to retreat, so that mine is never laid. Sandland did put down a mine as well, down near the south of that church. Uh, that's a very frequently used uh, flanking position, so always good to stick down a mine there. Volks versus Engineers up in the top. I mean, you would have thought that Helping Hands would have sort of twigged by now, that with a Volk up in the north, he could pull off, you know, if he could just send all his units to the middle in one big flank, he could, uh, he could do some damage. But Engineer actually went down in the north, so that's a bit of a setback, but not huge. When you go for 4ES, you know, lose, lose one Engineer, it's not so bad. But, I mean, if we look at the map control, we can see the power of the 4ES here in a big way. You know, most of the map, for me, uh, anyway, is red. It will be, you know, mostly blue for you. Yeah, exactly. He's got the whole left side completely locked down, and it's, you know, the only point really being harassed so far is the point that the Volks, the medium munitions, the Volks are capping right now. But except for that, it's been helping hands that's been harassing Sandland on his own fuel. Yep, although now, as I said, those Volks are going up to the north, claiming back that plus 10 munitions. Helping Hands looks like he's going to be shaping up for a big flank here. He might go and sally up to that plus 10 munitions, or he might just be sending all his units down to the middle, uh, as I predicted a few moments ago, because, as we know, there's only two MGs and one Volk squad here down in the middle for actual fighting units, uh, plus yeah, obviously the Flamer Pyre. We also have a quite a fast motor pool from Helping Hands, so he's basically just waiting for the fuel to get his first M8 out, and it's only 6.50. I think he had it up around 6.20, 6.30 into the game for the motor pool. You know, it's not super fast, but it's pretty damn fast. Pretty damn fast, ex yeah. Yeah, Extended Tier 1, uh, that pack is, you know, it's barely going to be on the field at the same time as M8, so he's going to have a, you know, 30 second window where he can really wreak havoc on those M8s, uh, the MGs, I mean. Volk's forced to retreat up here in the north. Uh, Sandland, he's a good player. He's going to know now that the M8 is going to be coming because classic symbol of an M8 to be on the way is that your opponent goes all quiet and he doesn't flank you. Because if he starts yeah. flanking you, you can normally uh, expect bars, but no flanks incoming, just a little bit of light harassment. He spots actually the mine with a minesweeper. Very nice to see minesweeper usage. Oh, in the south, the MG is not facing. He's facing the Oberlin River. Here comes the rifles and the flamers. That MG is in trouble. Oh, Ooh, he, he just had, had the angle on them. He just didn't yeah. have the LOS, but he's not going to be able to... He's going to get run down here by the Flamers. Oh my god! Holy, what, what the... That explosion! Jesus uh, Christ! That was the biggest Flamer what? crit I've ever seen. That was... Yeah, that was incredible. What that the hell? Huge. It left a massive pile of... of burning that, there. That's... Pools of burning, yeah. That's like the kind of thing I see when a Mordahar track fires its incendiary round. I've never seen anything like that from a Flamer fire. I've ever, ever seen that. That was a three-man engineer squad. 
the that guy evaporated. With the tank must have been critted or something. And the the guy must have like. Exploded. He must have had the gas lane on the outside of the fuel tank because that was I just. Have no idea. Apparently, was... you know, they doused themselves in gasoline before the fight because it repels Germans. I don't know. <laughs> That Obviously was just work. not good, not good at all. The tier 2 now is up, we have a pack building, but the M8 is now on the field, he's, he hasn't actually got skirts yet. He could get fausted for quite a lot of damage, I'm going to assume though that he's in the process of upgrading. Yeah, the skirts are done right now, so there goes the ooh, skirts ooh. and the MG is upgrading as well. So, you know, there's a few very defensively placed mines, you know, one by the little car truck, the green cover car truck by the wire, and one up... Uh, just to the west of the munition, low munition point, which is oh, going to hit a mine here. Oh, he's, oh, he's so clipped. Oh, oh, he hits go. a mine. He gets a destroyed engine, but he's got engineers on hand. Always smart to have engineers on hand to That's try and prevent that. To run its ass off to get that. Finish. Well, check out this Volk squad. He's going to try and come up here. He's going to try and faust it. And I'll it's going to work, too. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, the oh, M8 kills the guy who was about to faust it. Oh, that was so close. Three are up for helping hands as well in his base. And he's healing up his uh, engineers and his rifles right now. So, Pack is actually on the field now, so the M8 has lost its 30 second window. That mine kind of ruined it for him, because otherwise, if that mine didn't explode, it could have harassed his choke point there, uh, just by the bridge. But yeah, it could have been very nasty, very nasty indeed. We actually have mines going down in the north from the rifleman squad on Sandland's own plus five fuel, which means we do have infantry company selected by helping hands. So we can expect on map howitzers and off maps and all sorts of things to be coming later in the game. I know for a fact, having lost more than my fair share of games due to RT spam on this map, that on map howitzers are an absolute bitch to deal with on this map. Yeah, as we saw in, uh, I think it was the finals from the tournament, or was it actually in the semis as well? I'm not sure, but I think it was the finals on Semwa, where the artillery just completely bombarded the Wehrmacht player over and over, forcing him to, you know, sacrifice his vehicles, his stugs mainly, just to, you know, actually have a chance of his bunkers surviving. Yeah, it can be artillery on this map. is very difficult to deal with, and I think every game where we've seen this map, there has always been some very effective use of artillery. We might see actually a pyre go down here in the north. Pioneer does go down, but down here in the south, an engineer went down. So, it's 1-1. One, second one. pack misfires, second shot of the pack misfires. I, I thought it was kind of risky of Sandland to stay behind that green cover truck. You know, sure, uh, you know, green cover and he's baiting the pack, but he's sitting right next to his own mine. You know, just a slight, you know, miss from the main gun on the M8. It could have, you I know, see that, yeah. It, that mine. It could have been that very... Could have, that could have been bad. Yeah, that could have been very painful. He did get oh, a little nice bit lucky there. Oh, yeah, I see that. Nice grenade. Oh, my ah. God. The damage done was savage there. He tricked with five men and he could have healed them up. Here comes the M8 again, but it's not repaired and the pack is still in the same position. He's going to get another oh, float shock. Gets, oh, it just damaged the engine. He might lose it here. This will be yeah. huge if it goes down now. That'll it's be right. a large investment gone down for very little gain. Oh, there it goes. And down it does go, so that is not very good for Helping Hands, but Helping Hands does have great map control, so yeah, it's not it's not all it. bad. And He's with the triage out now, you know, we're probably going to see, especially because infantry veterancy popped just a little while ago for Sandland, so that means he's probably going to be committing to Tier 2 for quite a while. He is building now a half-track as well, so I think we can expect bars and stickies to, to be the next uh, tech of choice. From the US player. Kills on his rifles, so uh, you know he needs to get some Volk kills and Gren kills before they start vetting up too heavily. Because after that, you know, unvetted rifles versus vet two infantry is just uh, it takes you so long to vet up your rifles because you get so few kills. Yeah, this is this is the primary problem with 4ES is that you take uh, you you deal very little damage because you know the overarching idea most of the time is to try and tech up as fast as possible and any kind of fast tech strategy is you know it's fine if you're playing as Wehrmacht but as you're playing as US you, you're gonna sacrifice veterancy for that and veterancy is just so important you can't play US without veterancy you just yeah. you just can't. Vetted rifles are very powerful in mid game. Yeah, you know, I mean, and you, you know, as soon as you get Vet 3 rifles, rifles I won't yeah, go three, as far as to say that that's GG, but, you know, with... They are so, so powerful. It's ridiculous, yeah. Uh, and and especially savage. if you steal enemy weapons, you know, Shrek's, for example. There's a oh, lot of meats from helping hands everywhere. One on the south bridge, uh, you know, outside the church, next to the church, on the road, you know, there's mice everywhere. I always enjoy seeing mine usage. We got a second M8 house from helping hands as well, just terrorizing these bolts on the right side. But basically, Sandland's whole army is just stuck there in the field on the right side. 
uh, you know, he's having trouble getting the middle VP because he's getting harassed from the south and, you know, from flanking rifles and flamers, even though that flank didn't go so well due to the, you know, combustion of their own flamer fuel or something. I don't know what the fuck yeah, happened Yeah, that was pretty insane. We do have a nice little mini flank here going on with some, some of those rifles in green cover, though. They're going to go up like a fucking Roman torch, though, in a minute. Lots of damage done, down to five men from that flamer fire, but the... Ooh, he's gonna try he's gonna try and steal it, but the hard track is gonna be used to block him very nicely. Forces a retreat, lots of lost manpower, but very few losses taken from Sandland there, so very nicely executed by him. Hans is playing this force in the field from the from the half track and he just recruits it with sheep bolts. So it's okay. Ooh, bars, yep. Bars pop, interesting. So I mean, he's sort of a little bit out of position for bars to pop now. It's not the greatest timing in the world. You know, all his rifles are just sort of all over the place. But he is going to be able to stall out a little bit more effectively with those bars. But uh... but I think it's a pretty okay investment. As you see in the south, these two Gwens, they both have Shreks now. And there's a pack on the field. And, you know, there's just stuff everywhere. I'm not sure if just pumping out more M8s would do him much good. He has one for harassments, which is good because the pack is quite immobile. Uh, you can just run around on the left side of the map, on the right side of the map, coming up and, you know, harass some in the base. You know, it can be real pain in the ass with the M8s if you just, you know, keep avoiding that pack. Because Shreks are just not reliable enough, especially not if you kite them. Yeah, he could even go for a little base rush if he wanted to with that M8. And, you know, just cause a little bit of havoc there with some retreating squads, maybe finish off a few units. But certainly, the the window of opportunity, as you said, for that M8 to do the real damage is gone now. He just needs to hold the flanks. Outside. Oh, there it goes. Ooh, nasty. Oh, that two for, that two popped, uh, yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's a clear sign that you need snipers. He's yeah, rushing in now with the M8. Pack is nowhere to be seen. Nowhere to be seen, and the Shreks are trying to get to the middle, but they're way too far. Yeah, they're much too far away. Uh, I mean, so we actually have uh, helping hands. He actually built himself a fourth rifle, so... Okay, so not a bad idea if you want to try and maximize the effectiveness of those bars. Yeah. But I just don't think bars are going to do much to bet two grens now. He's waited too late uh, to get those bars, well, really. I, I don't think so either. It's going to be really hard to actually get any kills to wet up your rifles now. Yeah, you know, it's going to be an uphill struggle. Or something and really get a very juicy grenade off or, you know, a sticky on half tracks or stugs or plumas or whatever the next move for Sandman will be. If he doesn't stick in tier two, which I think he, you know, he, he will now because he started betting up his grens. He just needs more grants, really. Oh, off of artillery popped on that little infantry blob, but easily avoided. I mean, off of artillery on infantry, on movable infantry, is just never a good idea, or very rarely anyway, because it's so easy to just dodge it. He got a nice three kills on it, but it was totally not worth it in my opinion. Totally not worth it, no. Th you know, three volt kills for 150 munitions, no way. Oh. You know, nice. something like a strafe would have done it a lot better. But... You know, infantry is the the doctrine of choice for this map most of the time. Uh, as I said, off the the off map artillery and the on map artillery combined, it just makes the late game an absolute nightmare for a Vermont player. Yeah. So Sandland, uh, how's his unit composition look like? His army right now. He still hasn't lost, you know, a ball or anything. No, he's got. He he lost two pyos, but aside from that, he's still got his entire starting army, and he's got a very good army. You know, he's got two vet two grands with trucks, two MG forty twos, two Volks. Flamer Pyo, Pack, and Half Track, so he can handle everything right now, except that sniper, ironically, yeah, which exactly. expired its first shot. That sniper is, you know, he's got his work cut out for him. He really needs to lay on the hurt, you know, constantly, especially to the Gwens, which are, you know, very powerful and very hard for barred rifles without vet to kill, and, you know, they're quite expensive. Yeah, that sniper's gonna pose a problem. It's gonna be interesting to see what Sandland does as a counter to it. We actually have a Goliath out from the north. I was just going to say that. I was like, That's hmm. awesome. I, I think oh. he's tired of his own fuel getting harassed over and over <laughs> and mine plant that there. Uh, that's actually gonna be another brilliant. mine. Do you see that on the hedge between the hedge and the little house there, the shack? Uh, I see that. I see that. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, well, Santa yeah. needs the fuel. He's on 23 fuel with a plus 5 income. So yeah. he actually uh, has no fuel. Hans basically he has no issues with you know, income of any kind. He's got 54 munitions and 26 fuel, and he got plenty of fuel in the bank. He had over 100, and he just bought his first on-map artillery piece. Ooh, on-map artillery. So this is where the hurt begins. But we do have Blitz picked for Sandland. I know that he absolutely loves his Blitz. This guy just always seems to go Blitz every game I play. Um, and he is called on some Stormtroopers. 
He has enough CPs to unlock that lovely stew as well, which I think actually would have been a better choice because there is no AT. Instead of the Stormies, <laughs> yeah, I, I totally go for the stew. The stew would just rip everything in Han's army up into pieces now because unvetted rifles versus stew is just a complete laugh. Yeah, I mean, the, the stew is really powerful this batch. It comes out one CP earlier and for, you know, 500 manpower in four CPs time, you know, that's practically nothing. You can you can have yourself a very potent as tank force. On map already oh. on the pack, maybe? No, nope, nope, it smacks harmlessly into the water. I just love those water effects. Really oh. awesome. Oh, that did an amazing amount of no damage at all. <laughs> no damage at all, yeah. It's like, what the hell? He was basically straight on top of it. Or very close to it. There's nice, some nice splashes in the water. Are you getting that? Yeah, I get, I get a little bit of that. He's just... Yeah. All he's doing is mining mining under sea right now, though. Nothing of... Uh, <laughs> nothing too important, actually, hit. I'm sure, maybe he has something against, like, sea life in Semua. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I hate fishes! Kill them! Actually, I'll yeah. tell you what uh, Seb told me the other day. is Semua is actually the name of the river, not the name of the town. Ah, yeah, true. I heard that. Is that in the finals? I'm not sure. it, was, it was in one of the SNFs, yeah. So we actually have that, that half track. It had a little clown car of Grens inside. They actually popped out the sniper. The American sniper is in now a very bad position. I think Sandland knows he's somewhere behind his own lines, and the moment that sniper retreats, he's gonna he's gonna be chased down. Yeah, he's just basically sitting there on the other side of the church, and he's just gonna go straight forward into the road where the retreat path is, hopefully. But his sniper is basically just soft retreat. Oh, more off map artillery on the middle VP, but again, nicely dodged, easy to dodge. So much munitions being wasted here by the American player on off map artillery on, you know, simple infantry squads. I mean, if you're gonna do that kind of trick where you drop it just as the just as a point's about to get capped so that you can assume your opponent isn't looking, you need to distract your opponent first. Exactly. Otherwise, so it's not, it's not gonna work. Smoke. Exactly. Or, you know, in the middle of Ooh, an engagement. Off, on map artillery coming down now. This can be really nasty. Uh, those no, storms are walking dangerously close. Ooh, that was close. Very, very close. No, but, up. again, no damage. No damage at all. Surprisingly unlucky already used because that on map already, the off map, sure, that was just on the middle point for, you know, the decapping purpose, so he couldn't cap the point. You know, it did its work. It, it forced the Grants to retreat, but that's basically it. Oh my god, those MP44s absolutely chewing up rifles, and now Sandland knows where the sniper is. The sniper isn't moving, the sniper's gonna be up shit creek in a minute. He's gonna chase him down. He needs but to retreat now. Oh, troops with the half track. He needs to retreat now, and the house will act oh, as oh, a oh. line of sight blocker, but now he's waited too late. He Ooh, might be able to get away. No, no, away. Sandland, he knows where he is. He still he knows. knows where he is. He oh, he's getting he so close to getting, getting fat. He's, that was very lucky. Oh, he, he might get him get now. He might get him. This he's is gonna, gonna be nasty. He's gonna, get him. He's gonna retreat. Is he gonna make it? I don't think he's gonna make it. I don't think he's gonna make it. Not no. There he goes. Boom. So down goes the sniper. That was the biggest asset that Helping Hands had, really, up until this point. Sandland now in a great position. He's floating a ton of manpower. 700 manpower almost. He can afford to pop himself out of stew and still be quite comfortable in terms of manpower. And second sniper out from Helping Hands down in the south, picking it off MG42 crew members. But is it all a little bit uh, too late? And here this comes the, the decap on the Semua pin as well outside American space, so he's going to lose the whole left side. Oh no, second sniper could go down here due to Volks chasing. He's taking a lot of damage, he's very close to going down. If he loses the second sniper, that could practically be GG right there, but a mine oh. stops him. Very nicely placed. But oh, look at it! Look at him, he has health. no health. Uh, that was so close. That guy has that, that, no health. Uh, well, that could have gone either way, really. Yeah, he, he got lucky there. Very, very lucky. So, an American player helping Hans is not gonna try to get this cut off into his own hands again so he can get all those juicy resources on the left side because he's basically keeping it in the game at the moment because he's gonna, you know, his munitions income is gonna allow him to use more off maps and maybe, you know, in a while when he gets more CPs by Rangers and get SMGs for them because I think he really needs something to mow down these grants. Definitely. We actually have Vet 3 infantry now, so that's going to make those stormtroopers just ridiculously powerful. So powerful. Flamer on Grants in the church at the same time as these bullets and MP40 storms trying to chase them away. He loses a Grant. Just one. Just the one, yeah. Yeah, people say that Flamers... I, I'm sure they must have nerfed Flamers in the patch or something, because they just don't seem to rape like they used to. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe they changed the crits or something. It's all about the crits. Yeah, it's all about the crits of Flames. It's very right. It's very true. 
But this is actually a pretty nice push. Uh, Sandler didn't get his MG, you know, in place fast enough to stop it. And here comes more off map artillery. He forces a retreat on the MG, but not before he gets his entire <laughs> army pretty much guy. routed. Yeah, I saw a guy. He was very unfortunate. I can just see a, a bit of leg, a bit of torso there. See a bit of torso everywhere. <laughs> yeah, a bit of torso everywhere. I mean, indeed. A bit here, a bit there. So the own map already should be firing soon again as well, as soon as he finds a nice juicy target. I'm not sure what the target would be, but Sandlan is keeping most of his, you know, he's supporting his army with everything. He's got the Shrek friends for light AT, and he's got the pack sitting around just waiting for something. Uh, I think he actually has got the pack aim at the on map howie i think that's yeah i was just i was just measuring up the range if he moves forward a little sure. bit he can actually snipe the he can actually snipe that uh well, he's that, on map howie. For this, that is happening right now he's firing his power so he's gonna light it up when it does damage to his units and then he's gonna pack snipe it that's he can't me. actually pack snipe it from where he is though he has to move up yeah. to where that rifleman squad is uh, so yeah. uh he needs to eliminate the support oh nasty oh. shot almost kills off that victory grand Oh, uh, the half drag goes down, so, goes. you know, I mean, it took a little while, but he finally kills something with some artillery. He's going to lose the pack now and have it recruited by rifles, most likely. Yeah, it's going to so, be stolen. So that goes down. Not stolen just yet, but I'm sure we'll be seeing it getting stolen later. So finally, some veterancy for these rifles. I mean, you, you just need to start the veterancy. You know, once you start the veterancy rolling, the rest of it comes much easier. Yeah. It's starting it that is the hard part. And finally, you know, Vet 1, not great. 25 minutes into the game to only have Vet 1, but, you know, you got to take what you can get. It's going to be a med bunker, I guess. Almost certainly, I should imagine. He's not upgrading it yet, but that's because he only has 30 munitions. But, oh my god, yeah, the map plus is, uh, 55. Better. Yeah, the map is looking, well, okay. pretty even. Yeah, it's okay now. You know, it's pretty even. I would say that, you know, this is quite a lot like how many games on Senwa tend to pan out. You know, very difficult for Vera in the start, but if you let them get their vet, you know, it, they're going to crawl their way back onto the field, and you're really going to feel the impact of it if you don't have any veterancy before then. Yeah, especially. You really need those vetted rifles if you're going to fight vetted, you know, Wehrmacht infantry, especially Grand Stereo. Oh, this is going to be a nasty ambush by Stormtroopers here. He's going to throw a bundle, I think. I'd be very surprised. Yeah, here we, here we go. Here's a bundle. Is he going to notice? He doesn't notice. He takes a whole load of casualties. That, that only vetted rifle, rifle might go down here. And it does go down. down. That was a very big load. That was, a, that was an excellent ambush by Sandland. Very nicely done. And now there's a bar squad up here in the north. Uh, they're getting pretty badly outgunned though by this uh, Shrek Swing. Uh, Shrek Gren? Gren Shrek? Yeah, he had a pretty good thing going on there versus the Grants in the beginning before, you know, it was just a Grand squad and one Pyo guy, and the Pyo was actually forced to retreat, but with the reinforcing Vols, he was forced to retreat himself. I, I actually think I saw the bars actually destroy the Haystack. Is that even possible? Um, I think the bars destroyed it. I know Flamers destroy, the, destroy that, but oh, yeah. damn. Uh, Rifleman Squad here laying a mine down here in the middle. They were actually laying a mine. One of Sandland's MGs ran up to it. He didn't notice. He could have ran it down right there and then and killed it or forced him to retreat, but he doesn't. Uh, can you tell me what's in the house in the south there? If you're seeing That's that an MG. That's an MG42. Ah, but he hasn't tapped the point. <laughs> I'm not sure what that Oh, like. down right there. That oh. is a Volk Squad. What the Volk hell squad? is that doing in there? That oh, is really squad. weird. That's a Volk Squad down there. The Point. Why is he down there in the first place? That is really bizarre. <laughs> I guess, you know, if he capped the 10 munitions point and then, you know, kept harassing whatever engineer comes around, you know, the extended line of sight, I guess they could see almost to the point from that house. I'm not sure. I guess. Oh, another nasty assault by MP44s here into flamethrowers, though, so they're going to have a tougher time. Yeah, but they're so powerful with that three. They are damn powerful. Oh, nice use of bar suppression. He lost a lot of rifles, but he might actually lose his Storm Squad. Oh, retreat to the sniper. But the sniper oh, I thought shot. that damn oh, cooldown. There it is. Or if he, he, gets if he gets guy. chased, he just needs a flamer crit now on flamer retreat. Crit. Just needs one flamer crit. No, he oh. doesn't get it. How unfortunate. Sandler now has a sniper out. He's going to show himself for the first time with his first shot on that flamer range squad. That's looking nasty. Up yeah, here in the north. It's a dangerous game Shrek's. with the flame. They could go very fast. Nah, he's oh, he retreats in good time as well. Up here Where's in the north, Shrek Run Squad laying down the hut on a flamer engineer. Almost goes down. Just about manages to get out of there. Just in the nick of time. That MG42, though, you know, I can see the Semwa pin is beginning to take shape. Although the main bit of the Semwa pin around this actual cutoff point in the middle hasn't been taken and is held quite 
decisively, I'd say, by a couple of barred rifles. Uh, party is gonna be on the building with MG, I do believe. Yes, it, it is. is. But you know, the thing is, you, you should never RT buildings and never RT units in buildings unless the building's about to get destroyed because he actually got lucky there and he did. He took took down one guy. But most of the time, the you don't do anything. Itself. Most yeah, of the time, it does nothing. The, 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 the building takes all the damage, and the guys inside just sit there. But it's when the orange shell actually hits the window where the guy is sitting or whatever, standing. That's when they actually die, which is a very rare occurrence. Yeah, it's generally not so much worth it. But now we have VPs looking very nicely for Sandland. I mean, I thought he had a really rough time early game, but he's got he's still got 433 VPs versus 278 uh, from hands. So. And, you know, lots of map control getting conceded now by the American player. Down here in the south, we've got a Volk Squad taking that plus 10 munitions. Fresh sniper now out from Helping Hands. Is that, how many snipers does he have now? Still has the one. But that's a that's a fresh one, so he must have... Yeah, he must have lost the other one. I haven't been paying attention to his sniper. Ah, he lost okay. the first one, you know, and then he... He didn't lose the second one on the retreat on the south there, uh, on the bridge. He must have lost so it I'm not sure, else. he must have lost it somewhere else. Yeah. Those sneaky, sneaky snorms. I've been watching them sort of skulking around. He's just waiting for a chance to ambush that sniper, I think. Yeah, or a bundle or something on the pack or the ATG, you know, something like that. We got a nice little flamer. I like the, you know, unit composition, you know, with one bar squad and a flamer squad, you know. That I was just going to comment on that. Everything. Yeah, you know, I was just going to say. One squad of anything just has to retreat instantly. Oh, and there's a double Shrek squad just upgraded, just brought on Storm Squad here, gonna get found by the Flame Rangers if they just move forward a little bit. They're actually gonna sneak round and try and take out that 105 Howitzer, and if that 105 Howitzer goes down, that's gonna be a huge, huge blow to the American player. Oh my god, check out the Storms in the middle. Oh, the Rifleman laying a mine, he doesn't throw a bundle. I thought he was gonna lay a, a throw a bundle, that would have been so awesome. so much damage when they're building. Jesus Christ, that was fast. That was insane. That was did actually he just insane. Get pack sniped? I think he got pack sniped. I think he did as well. Pack's got one infantry kill. Ah, he, he did get a storm get pack sniped. That's just. Tell you, tell you what would have been really good though. There is to wait for the rifles to finish laying their mine and then throw a bundle on top of it. <laughs> now that would be funny. Where is that artillery map, landing? He, he Again on that same MG. building. And it forces the MG to retreat, but I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's worth it. I think because technically, you know, I'd rather use my own map Howie on something instead of just wasting space. You know, it's just sitting there with its pop eating up all your pop and not doing anything because there's not really many targets. Most of Sandland's army is very fluid and, you know, it's it's not very static. He only got the two MGs, one was in the building and he knew where it was, so he took the shot, I guess. That's true. I don't true. think you've ever true. even seen the Medic Bunker. Well, you should have seen the medics by now, and he's only two casualties now away from getting his uh, Gren once that final medic gets back to the location. Storms has an ally, uh, allied base here. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. Waiting for the rifles to leave, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. He doesn't want to have to be forced into a straight retreat, I guess, although that's what he's probably going to have to do. Got another sniper building from Hans at the moment. So as he... He's expecting Sandland to stick in Tier 2, so it's not a bad choice, and it looks... From the looks of it, he's gonna stick in tier two. So snipers, you know, it could really help him. Uh, more sneaky storms with ten kills now, opening up in the middle. I think they're a little bit outgunned now. He's gonna yeah. make a charge for the sniper. Doesn't get it. Is forced to retreat, and that was nicely done by hands. And now I think those storms have opened up. He's actually there focusing. Are. He's focusing on the MG emplacement before he goes for the howitzer. Oh, here Throws a bundle. bundle nade on the howitzer. Howitzer is now gonna go down. There is nothing hands can do to stop it now. Nothing he can do, and there we go. There's a nice retreat. He's gonna lose another storm, at least one other storm on retreat here, due to the sniper sniping elite infantry. But that was all in all very, very successful for him. Yeah, extremely successful for Sandland. That was basically, that was basically a total win. He he loses two storms, uh, to a 105, and almost Ooh, three storms. <laughs> oh, Ooh, he hits a mine as well. Uh -huh, if he loses he that storm squad on retreat and you know drops a strike or something, that will yeah. not have been worth it. But no it looks like up. he's going to get out of there. That was actually kind of lucky that he didn't take more damage on retreat, but I guess that's the effect of being Vet 3 when you're retreating. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, it, Hans got kind of lucky, you know, sniping the third guy on retreat anyways. So, you know, it was luck from both sides, really. I guess, I guess. Although I, it, he I, should have I been able to snipe him as well. In the, uh, 
in the south uh, gets two grants and bets his rifle up to bet two, so his rifles are finally getting some whip. So oh, he could lose that grant squad, and he might even drop a Shrek here if he's really unlucky. Oh, he's not paying attention. Oh dear, oh dear, that was not good for him. He loses an entire grand squad, that's lots of vet now. Finally, the vet comes rolling in. It's a little bit too late to cause a nade. Oh, he I didn't catch the nade, but he's going to kill off the Volk squad. All he has to do is chase him on retreat. That Come squad's got to go down. And do it. There we go, and bet three, bet three. They've gone to bet three in just a matter that of was seconds. That's the fastest vetting I've ever seen on rifles. He's He vetted from one to two on the grand, uh, on the nade on the grands, and then from two to three on the volts with another grenade. I told you before, what he yeah. really needs to get some vet is some very juicy grenades, and that's exactly that's what exactly happened. That's exactly what he did, yeah. That Breaking his vet right now. Yeah, good. That, that, was, that was savage. But now he has vet three infantry, like those vet three storms. Okay, if they get into really close range, then the storms will probably still win. But against you know anything longer than than ultra point blank, this is gonna be nasty. Those vet three rifles, I can't wait to see those guys in action, chewing shit up. I just hope they stay alive. We actually got the Sandlands sniper. He's basically been on guard the fuel point outside my base duty for like the whole game. <laughs> He's never, ever, ever been even remotely close to get a counter snipe. But right now, I guess with two allied snipers on the field. Uh, both of them have taken shots, so I, I'm guessing since one of them is vet one, Sandlan has paid attention and he actually knows there are not one, but two snipers. Getting a counter snipe would, you know, be good, but you would lose your own sniper in the process 50% of the time or something. Yeah. It's looking nasty. I think he's going to try and rely on those storms to do the main duty. He's actually sneaking those storms up to where those snipers were, but now he's in a bad position. Those flamers are just so close. <laughs> it's always so, so close. Oh god, if only these players knew how close they were. Now the Vet3 rifles are in a bit. Oh, nicely done with that nade there. He does get another kill. I think, if I remember correctly, the buffs to damage also apply to nades and stickies. So yes. that turns nuclear pineapples into <laughs> uh, like fucking hydrogen pineapple. bombs. <laughs> <laughs> hydrogen pineapples. <laughs> hydrogen pineapples, yeah. Oh, sneaky storms behind his ATG is easily gonna decrew it with a bundle or just basically just a single bundle base. or just yeah de decloak and uh, it'll take waiting about two seconds. For these snipers to come out of the base or something juicy that the king can attack because they're gonna go around the hedge now, and you know if the, oh, those he snipers, sees take snipers. A shot on top, he it, sees them, he's gonna move to them. This now is the question very, very is how dangerous. patient is he gonna be? Is he gonna wait to actually sit on their retreat yep. path? Can't you see the second? There's oh, he's coming in from the front, and now he's coming from the rear as well. This could be huge. Perfectly, perfectly pulled off. If he doesn't get a kill here, it's very unlucky. He does there get one of them. Here. Nice use of bar suppression. Prevents the kill on the other one. Oh, ATG that was a sniper. beautiful ambush. Bundle. Oh, that's going to be... Oh, it, it, was, it was to the edge of the rifle blob. He got kind of unlucky there, but that was a greatly executed ambush by oh, Sandland. I grenade on MG in the center, guarding the central VP. Oh, he just needs to tell his rifles to halt so they actually shoot. Oh, he might get MG on retreat. Oh, he gets him. So finally, that means the Sandlands down to just the one MG. So that's that's really, really, really big, actually. But now, Panzer IV is out, and there's a second P4 building. There's only... Well, there's the ATG decrewed, and there's the pack. So there is just about sufficient AT to deal with that. But, you know, getting sticky is probably not a bad idea if he hasn't done so already. Yeah, especially considering the tanks are not vetted up yet. So no skirt stickies are totally more worth it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, those Vet3 rifles, they're all healed up. They're ready to rock and roll. I can't wait to see him. Mm, gonna shoo some German faces off. Let's go. He's gonna go up to the north here, and he's, I'm just, I just want to watch how quickly these Vet3 Grens just evaporate under this bar fire here. <laughs> it's gonna be nasty, especially if he's still gonna continue capping. But he's actually gonna cap the He's VP gonna cap himself, yes. yeah, I guess. Well, actually, check out the VPs. We're down to 88 for hands, so this is getting seriously low. I think we got a grenade coming. Grenade coming on the Grens in the north! He's not paying attention! Ooh. Oh! Another Grens squad goes down to the Vet3 rifle. So that leaves Sandman with just uh, one Grens squad now, but he's making up for what he loses in Grens uh, with Stormtroopers, with three Stormtroopers. Two of them have double MP44s, one of them has double Shreks. That is a fearsome cloaked army, and check out where the double Shrek storms are now. I'm watching it. I'm not sure where he's pointing it. Oh, he's gonna protect his own munition point with the Pyo. Sandland actually knows this because sees it. see it with the Shrek Grand. There we go. Shrek oh, one of them actually misses. I want to see bar suppression used now. If he pops bar suppression right now, he can actually prevent. Oh, he's gonna throw a nade. This could be... Oh, the nade got stuck oh. on the building. Oh, no. I have not seen someone so unlucky before. Uh, he might have so been able to prevent the death of his howitzer if that nade had landed, but that was... 
That was so unlucky. Uh, very so, unlucky. so the unlucky. The first Shrek shot, or the, the one that didn't hit the ground, it actually hit the, the guy crew. Oh, check out the Vent 3 rifles, they're gonna get him on retreat. He's come up to his retreat path. And both snipers are there. Oh, he gets one on retreat. Oh, he gets one and he drops a Shrek for the Vent 3 oh, rifles. Oh, Shrek on Vent 3 rifles, not good for those P4s. Ah, uh, he's gonna get away though, that was very lucky. He could have oh. lost them easily there. If he had chased with the snipers, I think it might have been a bit more different, but... Map, how are we on the med bunker? Oh, on the med bunker, yep. Sorry, off map, sorry. Both those P4s are just chilling in Sandlands base. They haven't actually done anything yet. Is he just it's gonna up. wait till he gets them to, like, vet 3 and then just be like, oh, hi? <laughs> yes, he wants at least vet 2 for the top gunners, so he can suppress some rifles and shit. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure why he's waiting, actually. This would be, he's being a little bit too passive. He's being very aggressive with the storms. Excellent stormtrooper use. That double flank from both behind uh, and the front so of those good. So good, good to watch. Brilliant move I've ever seen. But... Some of his units are very, very passive, like Ooh. the sniper guarding his fuel point. Sure, you know, it, it's okay, and with two snipers on the field, it's very risky, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I just want to see some more use from them, because snipers are kind of expensive. They are indeed. He, he might even lose a rifle squad here. He is going to lose a rifle squad here. Up, oh, capping this plus 10 fuel. He's not concentrating. He's focusing where his vet 3 rifles are down here in the middle. There's going to be more stormtroopers are going to get revealed in a minute here. Yep, rifle squad goes down in the north. That's not good. So now Sam the Sniper finally opening up a little bit. He's going to try and chase it down, but we could see a nicely placed bundle here. Could put a swift end to these veteran rifles. Oh, they're down to four men, yep, and only four. one of them, one of them has to try. He might even lose the veteran rifle. Don't lose the veteran rifle. Needs to retreat faster oh. than that. That was very risky. He's getting lucky there because of the retreat pad, uh, you know, around the building. Because if it wasn't for that building, those rifles would have been toast. These guys going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Still yeah, one lost those tank. veteran rifles. I might have just, might have just gone silent there for a minute. Just Alt F4 the game and just yeah. Push it up. <laughs> just, uh, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this. Uh, we got off map combat group finally uh, for helping hands. Oh, good timing. Because those eight. double P4s, uh, they're, they're on yeah. the warpath now. We got two rifles, a mortar, and an M10. Ah, uh, they they're looking so mean with those top gunners, and uh, they look so nasty. Yeah. So even though he did lose one of the rifles up top, capping the medium fuel outside Sandlands base, he now has five rifles. So you know, with bars and nades and maybe stickies, you never know. But he's probably gonna research them as soon as he sees these tanks, which he just did. Oh, hi there, P4s. <laughs> oh, hi. I wasn't expecting you there. I'm gonna leave now. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Yeah, we definitely but need to see some stickies. He lost quite a lot of units now, didn't he? He lost, you know, one NG or two. Well, I'm looking at his unit composition now, he still has an awful lot of stuff. He actually just got himself an officer, which is Vet 3, due to infantry veteran seat. That's kind of funny. What <laughs> veteran seat does the officer get? I can only imagine. I have no idea. That's Maybe really he like, one hit shots everything with his Luger. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> epic. We actually have one of the snipers there. He's Vet 2 after only 7 kills. That is the problem with Stormtroopers. They are like veteran seat pinatas. Hit them and they explode in all kinds of green XP. Yeah, it's just... It's Really, you know, it's so easy to vet up your snipers when there are storms around, especially vetted storms. It's so good. Uh, oh, he might lose his officer. He's wow, not paying he ready? It to it. No, force retreat. Awesome. But the rifle's gonna finish him off. If he's he just showing off now. I think Sandland thinks that he's got this in the bag with 56 VPs remaining, four hands. Okay. He just needs to hold on to what he's got, maybe build himself uh, an MG bunker just to hold on to what assets he does still have, but. Then he's going to be in a pretty good situation, I'd say. Those double P4s. The hitch, but he just stays there, but the rifles are not pursuing for some reason. And now they're pursuing. If he loses that officer, now if veteran, if storms are a veteran sea pinata, then officers are like a veteran sea. I don't know what. What's bigger than a pinata? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, here comes the M10, but, you know, what can an M2 do against two P4s? Uh, oh, and there's an ATG backing oh. up now as well. This very damaged P4 might be in trouble. Oh, another penetration on the front. Is that AP rounds? I'm not sure. Oh, he no. misses. No Why rounds. do you have to miss? If he didn't miss, he might have been able to kill that P4. Yeah, he might have been able to Ah, misfire. Just behind the edge. That was very lucky. P4 is going in. Oh, P4 is going in for the kill now, but I think he's going to lose. We got a very sneaky cutoff uh, at the same time here in the center. I see that, I see that. We got a second, another bunker coming up there, getting turned into a repair bunker. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Always a good idea when you have tier 4 out. 
all those veterinary rifles forced to retreat in the middle. He definitely doesn't want to lose those. They are like they are like the center point of his army now. Yeah, especially with a stolen Shrek. Those guys. Yeah, are... with a stolen Shrek, you know his strategy should revolve around those guys. <laughs> well, I think he does have stickies now. He tried to stick it with. Uh, he did. Yeah, uh, I saw him go into the oh. animation. He's creeping up though with his little AT army. He's got an ATG, oh, his stolen like pack, his M10. M10 needs to be repaired though. One shot from one of those P4s is going to send it into a 5% critical. Yeah, but he's got his engineers right at hand there repairing. And he actually got the cutoff with the rifles before he's forced to retreat. And there we go, an off map on the cutoff, and those pyres are in trouble. They are I... in trouble, but he gets out of that. The sniper, the sniper is now more in trouble. The oh. <laughs> uh, he saw it, he saw it. That was lucky. That yeah. was good. <laughs> that was good. Good, good, good. Don't, don't lose a sniper like that. That's. No, no, no. That, it's that like would second, be uh, dumb. <laughs> most common way to lose snipers is artillery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least the first in OMG one is mode. Encounter snipe, which is totally legit. Is yeah. he actually capping with this sniper on the fuel point? <laughs> I think he's capping with his vet two sniper. That's so ballsy. Oh that god, so that's ballsy. just like. I mean, if you're gonna cap with a sniper, use your own vet one for god's sake. Yeah, for god's sake, not the vet two guy. He might hit vet three in just a few storm ki storm kills, and you know, running in cloak is just so good. Oh uh, yeah, we have. Oh, the pioneer squad oh. goes down. That sniper is just like, oh, hi, Pioneer. Bye, Pioneer. We actually have a uh, two man Gwen squad. You know, he moved out of his base without reinforcing. Is he choked on Pop with those two P4s on the field right now? He's all the got storm? 45 out of 54, so Pop isn't an issue, but I think he realizes now that if he retreats, he's going to get sniped by both snipers. Well, yeah, it's like snipers. hiding up in the corner at the little canoe. He's like, get in the boat, Hans! Get the <laughs> fuck out of here! Get in the boat. Then we can sail away back to Berlin. Sail away on the Rhine. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. He's just so gonna get sniped. Ooh, MG nest going down in the middle there. I don't know what that's gonna do though to... to... Oh, shit! The Double Shrek Storm Squad, of course, they went down, so that means that... Yeah, Sandland really is, is kinda down on units now. You know, he's got two Grand Squads. He just built himself an officer. He's he still lost. got his original MG, but... Um, yeah, I think he did. And he lost one MG as well. So he's got one MG guarding the munitions point, which is actually an allied hand. So it's basically, basically completely pointless right now. Oh my god, double vet rifles took a massive hit there. And now a mortar from the offline combat group finishes off the med bunker before it could even pump out a single free Gren, I think. Nice nade going in here on the low field down at the south. Ooh, oh, kills two guys, and there we go. Another vet two rifle. So, you know, two vet two rifles now with the vet three as well. Oh my god, this could, could be some epic tank squishing here in a minute. Oh, it's gonna be dangerous for those storms. But the people very dangerous. Do. He's is he gonna go for the squish or is he gonna back out? I know I I know what I do. I'd be get greedy and try and squish the storms. But <laughs> yeah, squishing vet three storms. Mmm, juicy. Yummy. And now that vet three storm squad. Uh, vet three. Oh my god, look at the damage oh, done. That, yeah. That was insane. If you throw the sticky now, come on, long range sticky. Uh, gonna force that P4 to stick around there, and if there was any ATG support, the pack is moving up, gonna take a shot. Nope, he's behind the building. Oh, he retreats just before the Shrek fired. Probably could have timed that a little bit better, but a lot of damage done to those two P4s to not a huge amount of gain, so pretty well played by the American player. I mean, if you look at the VPs, this must be so frustrating for Sandland right now. To have yeah. your opponent down to 48 VPs, yet now appear to be... Well, I won't losing say the, losing, the, but... The other VP as well, so he's gonna go for three VPs in an allied favor at the moment, but the storms are... Oh, and look at those sneaky storms. I just love to see those guys get on the retreat path and just chase him viciously. A bundle uh, if he's could gonna get be... The cap, he gets the cap before. Uh, I think I would have uncloaked and ran faster than that. This could be nasty. Yeah, uh, he attention. retreats. The second, the second the VP gets capped, he's gonna pay attention to his rifle squad again, but... Under the time he is capping it, actually, he's not going to pay attention to the rifle squad. So I would have uncloaked and ran at him. Because, exactly. You know, yeah. Depending on the reaction time of the player, depending on how much APM they have, uh, you know, it's going to be hit or miss there. Yeah. Very nice kills in those storms. I think we have some often on map artillery coming down. We do. It's coming down on the right hand side, BP, but nicely anticipated. He didn't even wait for the first shell. He just yeah. knew that was where it was coming. Wow! That stray shot almost hit him. If that hatch wasn't there, though. Storms would have been great. Some bit for uh, rifles versus these storms here. He gets, tosses a grenade. It's nicely dodged. If he just gets a one or two more, he's going kills. for the bundle. This could be nasty, but he dodged easily. Easy mode. Easy mode. Yeah. Oh, so double good. snipers now on those storms. Oh my god, it's gonna be so so painful. And he bets up the second sniper to bet one. Only four kills and already bet one. That's, That's insane. 
He just managed to get those storms to cloak, actually. I think the rifle squad thinks that he must have retreated because he's going for the cap now. Oh, actually. Santa Sniper opening up. He's going to leave himself open to a bundle here, but he doesn't throw it because he knew that the squad was going to move. Yep. This is just all mind games now. It's all psychological. Sneaky storms is so annoying to play against. It's seriously like a freaking heart attack waiting to happen. Yeah, I mean, if anything's going to sort of improve your ability to keep an eye on all your squads at once, it's playing against a good Blitz player. Yeah. <laughs> if you notice, both teams actually have their plus 16 ammos OP'd, so they are both, you know, flooding uh, flooding the map with their sort of off-maps and on-maps and all kinds of juicy oh, things. Although, yep. Blitz doesn't yeah. really have a munition sink, like, for the Fatherland or anything like that. They just no, have, like, Blitz like nades that. and Stormtrooper upgrades. Yeah, Stormtrooper upgrades are pretty pricey, and you know, I guess you can spam Blitznades. I don't think I've ever, I haven't seen a single Blitznade from... I haven't seen a single Blitznade either. I think, you know, what once you get to a certain level of play, you accept that Blitznades just won't work cost-effectively. Yeah. yeah, and you know, you got bundles. You can rely on those instead. Yeah, exactly. Bundles, so much more effective. Double Sniper's now out from Sandland. He releases the hold fire on his second one. Now we have artillery coming down. We could see some sneaky storms get found. Oh, artillery goes down, kills two mechanics, or possibly a pioneer squad. I'm not sure whether that was mechanics or a pyo. Not sure. Vet 3 KCH now on the field. This is going to be nasty. We have a. Oh, check out that long range oh. sticky. I'm always uh, constantly surprised by the range of stickies in those things. Oh my god, there's KCH. What the fuck? Yeah, they got a, a, a artillery shell in the face, but they all three live and they pop med kits, you know, this oh second. Oh my god. KCH got to be the only unit in the game that can literally absorb. I take the shells. <laughs> Literally absorb a 105mm shell hitting them in the face and go like, ah, thank you sir. They Check out these snipers running in cloak with Blitzkrieg. Oh, Blitzkrieg. There's this your is... munition sink for Blitz, I guess. But yeah, Blitzkrieg, very, very expensive ability. Actually, only 125 munitions, but to let your snipers sprint in cloak, pretty damn useful. He might even kill. Was that the Vet 3 rifle? That was the Vet 3 rifle and the sticky kills it. Sticky kills him. Did you see the Shrek hit from the Vet 3 rifles? That took such a huge chunk of HP out of the P4. I'm very, very impressed. Oh, Vet 3 sniper now. The veteran is racking up now for the American player. I if can... there's something else than Storms that's veteran C Pinatas, it's Vet 3 KCH. KCH, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's a bar dropped actually. Ooh. Was that Vet 3 guy? No, that was that was one of the other Vet 2 rifles, but you know, Vet 2 rifles with three bars, you know, that's fucking painful. That's a pretty good medium medium attack unit. We got this mortar, he should just continuously harass Bombard that. Bombard that cutoff, yeah. Because he knows that all Sandlands units have to walk out of that little area in yeah. order to get to the front line. So if he can just put down a continuous barrage there, he could Ooh, do a nice lot of damage. hit on the south on the munition point. He's not paying attention to his storm, he's running out of there Ooh, now. Ooh, only one, one storm man. left. Yeah, I would just retreat that storm. Although, actually, no, I wouldn't because those snipers are around. And he could lose it on retreat. Oh, that overshoot almost hit the MG. More incoming in the middle. Yeah, he is doing exactly what we said with that mortar. He's just going to bombard that middle cutoff. Yeah, good idea. Very good idea. I yeah, must say. very smart. Storms get past the mortar bombardment, though, and they're walking straight for oh, the two. Oh, nade on a Knight's Cross takes them down. He gets another oh. kill with that Van 2 squad. Forces the retreat. Medkits just wore off. Those snipers from Sandland, double snipers. Causing a lot of hurt the for sniper, rifles. The American sniper is walking right into the storms. He found him. Oh! Found him. Was that the Vet 3 one? No. Oh. Yeah. Lucky Thank enough. God for that. He was actually scoping with his Vet 1, which was a good idea. Yeah, you know, a good idea in, in the grand scheme of things. Very, very bad. Losing a Vet 1 is bad, but you know, you can live. But with two Wehrmacht snipers at the moment, you know, that Vet 3 sniper does not have really rain. Oh my oh, god! Nice put around. That was painful. Ooh. Yeah, Sniper. definitely. I mean, yep. you know, a Vet3 sniper, it's, you know, he can he can sprint in clove, but that doesn't save you from a counter snipe. Although, having an extra 20% range, that will definitely help you uh, against counter snipe. Yeah. Oh, so close to the counter snipe here, actually. Oh, he might go for the. He doesn't go for the counter snipe. Check out those Vet3 rifles. They're moving in. They're going to decloak the storms. Uh, and the sniper. Might, might get his own retreat, but he gets around the hitch and he oh. actually. Wow, that was close. They're very close. More artillery shot. shells coming ah, in. Nice. nice shot on the storms. They are just remarkably lucky this game, I must say. He's been yeah, down to some health on retreat at least five times now. 
Yeah, the uh, it's been pretty insane. We we now oh my god, uh, I I mean I've I've been watching Sandland do this. He's been spamming manpower blitz with all his extra munitions all game. You know he's had shit ton of manpower. He's now back to tier three and he's starting to spam nebbles. He's got he's built one nebble and he's got two more queued up. Oh wow, so he's killing three nebbles. Yep. Wow. M10 actually hits the officer capping the fuel point. Takes 50 percent health off. And um, there's no way an M10 is going to hit anything on the retreat. Uh, I just remember casting an OMG game once and I saw uh, uh, an M10 blob snipe a retreating officer. <laughs> that was just hilarious. It was a vetted M officer as well, it was brilliant. M10 blob, okay, fine. I, I, I <laughs> that's okay, but one M10, uh, I don't think so. Oh, these vet 3 rifles are a little Ooh. bit too ballsy. He got a nice shot off with the Oh no, oh no! Don't lose them! Oh, he's gonna run the gauntlet, he lives. That was Ooh, so close. Oh my god! Oh, nice on map, off map, sorry. Oh, and he takes it out! <laughs> he gets it! That was so lucky! Well, I mean, he actually immobilized it with the sticky, but yeah. the repairing mechanics repaired it so damn fast. Oh my god, check out Sandline Snipers, they're running around uncloaked! Counter Snipe misses and the Counter Snipe comes in! I don't even know what to say. Uh, I don't even. That's, what, that's all I'm gonna say. Come on, M10, take the revenge and just crush those freaking Vermark snipers. Oh no. He's gonna go for the squish! He's gonna oh, go for the squish! He's oh, gonna he find doesn't, it. He doesn't quite know where they are. Oh. oh. He missed. He missed it. Uh, and I'm running around uncloaked and the sniper misses. And the counter sniper. Oh uh, god. Hey, Sandman oh. must have been running around on attack move. No one has those kind of reactions to be able to get the counter snipe off that damn fast. Oh my god, Rangers are not the appropriate counter. Oh my god, a bazooka <laughs> snipes one he, of the snipers. He bazooka the sniper. That and is. He, he naded roughly where it was. That was hilarious, bazookering the sniper. Oh my god. I guess that's at least some point of revenge, you know, I, I guess. A very but poor form they're... of revenge. I mean, losing a Vent 3 sniper is like. Uh, uh, I, I had to. I had to. Just take a moment there to absorb that. That was just. Uh... Look at Sandman's army leaving his base. Storm yeah, I know it's huge. Overt <laughs> officers, an MG, two Gwen squads, a KCH, and it's all vet three. Yeah, everything's fully vetted. This is just a nightmare to fight for US when it doesn't have properly vetted units. Just two vet two rifles and a vet three rifle, but except for that, the other two rifles are still completely mint, out of the box. Nice nade on the KCH on the top there. He's not going to be able to capitalize on it though, unfortunately. Yeah, he just, he just doesn't do enough damage. He needs the damage buff. Very nice fast retreat, one of the KCH. Yeah, gets... one nice little crit there. He's going to lose those engineers unless he retreats them right now. Retreat. He's going to lose them. Yeah, he's, they're toast. They're he's toast. Retreat, I think. Well, maybe not, because he's Sandler's not actually chasing after they him. They must be toast. Point. Surely they must be toast. Wow, uh, not, lucky not injury. Public. Yeah. Very lucky. Squad. If the MP44s would have turned around, turned around and also chased, they would have been so toast. Sandline could actually get a Tiger now if he wanted to. He easily has the CPs for it, but he doesn't have the manpower. He doesn't have the pop cap, I mean. He doesn't have the pop cap. Uh, we got another off map combat group uh, M8, M8, M10. <laughs> okay, so he's just going to build up an M10 army using off my combat group. Okay. And this actually won't be a very bad idea because the only AT on the field from Sandman is like a P4. Those P4s, yeah. Oh, nice bit of squishing on those Stormtroopers. He loses one of them to this squish. Oh, oh wow. He's going to chase him with those double M8s, I think. Oh, he's going to go for the kill. He's going the for the Grens. Yep, and force him into retreat again. Officer decapping the North Sea uh, victory point. Sniper opening up on the ATG gets decrewed uh, outside the church, and the pack is forced to backpedal. The sniper actually misses the mortar guy, I think. Did he miss? I oh, don't think so, he just decrewed it just now. M8s are probably gonna chase this officer down and maybe kill him on retreat. Ooh, uh, that'll be like instant vet 2 if they can kill it. Uh, so As he hard. comes across negative cover, maybe a snipe? Maybe, maybe shot? No. No, a misfire. Fire. I actually saw the, the shell leave the gun. <laughs> and then it just stopped in midair, because that's what happens. Oh, the KCH are getting off map, and he's getting the middle VP. There it goes. Oh, wow. I was I was zoomed in there, hoping that one more shot would come down, but it didn't. M8 harass on the nebbles with an M10 accompanying him. Oh, my God. He needs to kill those nebbles with the M10, though, really. 
If he really wants to do the damage, he has to actually, uh... This one KCH guy is very ballsy. He's sticking in there with, like, a pixel of health. He's gonna get what? sniped by that by a bar in a minute. And there's the tiger from Sandland. Oh, he gets he gets picked off in another Bet3 rifle squad for helping hands. Decapping in the middle. He doesn't quite realize though, I don't think. He certainly doesn't realize that it got turned into a Bet3 squad. We now have a tiger here in the middle. That is more than enough to tackle a single M10 on its own. He needs to do some serious circle strafing, but he's not at the moment. Another Neville now opening up. The oh, M10 explodes. If you check out the VPs now, helping hands down to just 13. All San needs to do now is just grab himself a VP for a few seconds. Fritz on that sniper in the center outside the church. Oh, oh MA takes the retreat. That was most unlucky. Long range Dickie comes in, but that Tiger is now on the field, rolling up, and there is, you know, there's what, only a stolen pack to counter it? That's not really yep. enough. ATG is decrewed, he just needs to recruit with some rifles, which is basically at his base at the moment. Here comes the Tiger, which misses, of course. Of course. Long range sticky maybe Good coming in. Nope. Sniping dudes. Oh, God. I just saw in the corner of my screen turn into pink mist as one of those rifleman guys just got... Evaporated from the Tiger gun, I guess? Yes. Evaporated is the correct word. Oh, two lots of artillery, I think, coming in in the middle. A bounce. <laughs> oh. Middle's getting capped by some fired up rangers who sprinted out to the middle to grab it. It's an M8 harassing these storms, but it has no top gunner, so the DPS is just horrifically low. Sandman either doesn't care or doesn't realize he's getting artied. I think he doesn't care. He just doesn't care, because I have a motherfucking tiger. Both these storms are forced to retreat. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. I think we're coming now to the nearing the end of the game. The fat lady has not yet sung, but she is definitely warming up. I'm gonna call this one for Sandland. All he needs to do is just take one VP and hold it, and he's you know he's gonna gradually build up his VP. He did just lose an officer. And he might lose a Gren here. Oh, Rangers with Thompsons might kill a, uh, a Gren here if he gets lucky. Oh, oh my god! Oh, the Bazooka! I was just going to say, oh, that's so unlucky he didn't get it on my retreat. <laughs> the Bazooka nails What is it with Bazookas this game? <laughs> like, they just went sailing out he of... He needs more Rangers, seriously. They're, like, saving him the game. Yeah, just spam Rangers, dude. And they'll, they'll counter tanks, counter infantry, counter snipers. Nice nade on those Grens. He might be able to kill them both. Oh, he does! Oh. That's two Gren squads gone down by this Ranger squad. He retreats in a timely fashion. But there's nothing protecting the middle VP right now. There's absolutely nothing stopping these uh, Vet 3 storms from capping the VP and taking down the last three P uh, 13 VPs. Definitely not. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see it, some it, M8 mine spam. Uh, you know, just in the front of every single base building, just put down an M8 so that he can't, <laughs> he can't do anything about it. Off map trying to save the middle VP. I don't oh know if Sandland didn't God. see it, or he's just waiting for it, no. He was waiting for it, he was trying to get the decap, but he didn't fancy losing a whole squad to it. No, I wouldn't either, especially not losing both Gwens. Did he just get ATG sniped? Jesus Christ! That's not supposed to happen anymore. <laughs> oh, nade nice nade, kills one. another guy there. Neville gonna take out the ATG, there it goes. Check out these VPs though, they're getting pretty low. I mean, I mean, 13 VPs isn't a whole lot, but he just needs to, I mean... Helping Hand is doing a great job of harassing them. He's grabbing the one down south as well. And he has the middle and the north one. I mean, I gotta say, just because I love the sight of Rifle Vet, I'm, I'm rooting for the American player now, but... Can he can he hold it all together to take down his opponent, who's now at 96 VPs? That is the question. If he just gets, you know, Vet 2 for the Rangers, and maybe vets up his uh, second rifle squad to Vet 3 as well, or his third. He's got two Vet 3 rifles at the moment, one with 28 kills and one... With 15 kills. See, so yeah, it's games like this that make me want to go and just play US again in order match because their veterancy is just so goddamn awesome. Long range sticky on the bottom VP. Oh, M10 deep. coming in now. Nice little flank. M and now the Shrek V3 rifles. This is getting very tense now. We could have a large part of Sandman's army evaporated here in a minute. And that would be a huge, huge blow. Neville M10's coming up. Rude. Neville stolen. Oh my stolen. god, Neville. Neville stolen. Blocked P4. 
Gotta get very it. nicely oh, done. M10 is. takes it out. Very nice. Uh, if he really wanted to be tricky there, he could have let one of his unvetted rifles kill the people with a sticky or something, you know, and get himself some more vet rifles. But at this point in the yeah, game... That base. He is! He is, he never linked the base. We have a stew coming out now. Nice. But there's still an M10 out. You know, two M10s, in fact. And one of them very healthy, one of them less so. VPs are getting so tense now. All the American player has to do is just hold this middle and the south VP. He's firing up rangers into the north, but there's a tiger there. Yeah, and you don't want to fuck with a tiger. Oh my god, that shot just went bouncing off into the yeah. horizon. So like a curveball. Yeah, one of those weird curveball kill shots. These. He needs to kill these pyos very fast before he caps it. Oh, he throws a mine. He stops the cap. But those vet three pyos are just so goddamn hard have to kill. Should have with SMGs fast enough. Oh no, those MP44s. He's blocking with the tiger. Very nice. This could be really horrible. Less damage than I thought. Another right? What? Where did those rangers Another come? ranger squad. Oh my god! One shot. Three of them go down. Nah, the M10s are charging in now. I mean, I don't. I don't think this is the correct thing to do. I don't think the American player needs to attack here. Officer goes down to a squish from one of the M10s. He doesn't need to attack though. He still has both VPs. I don't get why he's attacking, but uh, I don't know either. Because he can just he can just hold onto this middle and to this south VP and you know just hold onto them. Put one M10 next to each one and. Hold it like that, just squish anything that comes near. Can be a foul, so the M10 barely scratches it. That was very low damage, I must say. Oh, the Storms are going to try and grab this middle. There's an MA and a 30 cal there, but he's not going to be able to suppress him. They're so useless versus Vet Storms. Yeah, they really are just totally useless. Vet 2 rifles, no, sorry, Vet 3 rifles, they need to come back to the middle and prevent the cap. The M10 goes down in the middle. We need those units out into the field now. VPs are looking at 15 for Sandland, 13 for Helping Hands. It's getting so tense now. We might have another squish. There it is. Oh, he gets the cap, and he has a few seconds now to get the decap. He can't even afford to chase with those Vet3 rifles to kill off the storms. He probably would have been able to kill them off as well. Comes the steel. He needs to kill the steel really fast with his M10 before the Tiger kills his M10. If he's oh, he does kill the steel. Very nice, very nice. He's going to go for... He's going to try and stop the cap with the Tiger. He's... I think he's going to try to squish those rifles. A bundle could be really nasty at this point. Here comes a bundle. He's going to stay there for the cap, though. He has to. He does get the decap. Wow. He, he wipes the point. Nope. He lives. This and now this right-hand side VP is going to get taken as well. He needs to send something up to the north to cap that VP. Instead, he's sending everything to the middle. I don't think that's the correct thing to do. But at this point, I can understand not being able to think straight. Oh my god, check out those rangers. They're just running, they're just throwing themselves under the feet uh -oh. of those poor guys. He's gonna. Is this Broken Arrow? Was that bro. Is this game over? Game over. <laughs> I just. Oh, the, 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 vet, the Vet 2 rifle that was capping in the middle actually got killed by a Nebel, but where was that Nebel coming from, I think? That was. That was a Broken Arrow Nebel. He killed his own capping Vet 2 rifle. He did. Yeah, he's got one kill on it. Ah, uh, no. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. I think so. Maybe the MG killed him? There's a Volk MG by the munitions point? I'm not sure. Ah, uh, dear. I was very close. Very, very close. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. Uh, 15 to 2 VPs, my god. But at the same time, <laughs> uh, Sandland had the South VP uh, almost capped as well as the North one, and there was nothing even remotely close to the North one capping it, so... Yeah, you know, I mean, the, what... The, the middle, the war for the middle VP was uh, intense and all, but at the same time, Sandland basically had it in the bag with capping the south one. So even if the the middle one would have been stopped, that you know just been whited, uh, the south one would have been in Sandland's hands in maybe three, four seconds. It could have been so different if Hans had just sent one unit to cap that north VP instead of sending his entire army to throw themselves under the wheels of that tank. <laughs> Into the threads of the tiger. I think the tiger got more <laughs> infantry kills by squishing than actually firing his main gun. I mean, I'm just zoomed in. I can just see, like, the head of a ranger poking out, a rifleman. <laughs> it's like, oh god, you guys you guys died like heroes, didn't you? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, throw ourselves onto the wheels of the tank to slow it down, sir. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll slow the tiger down. Uh, Sadly, there's no mechanic in Camp here to help that, I think. Actually, they do slow down when they squish stuff. They, they, yeah, I think... Guess, I'm not sure it's I'm worth sure losing guys to do that. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like running over squish or running into squish. Is there a difference? You know, if you micro your units to like fire up and run into the tank. Oh, uh, I think it still counts as running over by the tank. But. I guess. Well, 
that was an entertaining game. We always have good games on Senwa. You know, all the casts we've done on Senwa have always been pretty down to the wire. I think the yeah. map just sort of lends itself to be quite quite a close thing. You know, all the VPs are in equal equidistant. You know, It's not like Angerville, two VPs one side and one uh, VP exactly. the other. They're all very spread out, and you, you know, the Americans have the closest one to the west, and the Wehrmacht or the Axis player has the closest one to the east. Um, you know, the middle one is, you know, basically the exact same length. It looks like it's in the smack middle of the map. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, yeah, I'm sure. It's not, a, yeah. it's not a long distance to actually get your opponent's closest VP. So the Axis can get the West VP. You know, it doesn't take forever to get there. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, like I mean, another great game that, that we've had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, broken arrow neville. Stolen nevels are just the sound of hearing an American player fire a neville. It's rather disconcerting. I gotta say, yeah, it's yeah, very really bizarre. Not something that you that you're used to hearing. It's rather sort of like like someone scraping their nails down a blackboard. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, thank you for joining me once again for another fantastic game, another fantastic cast for Idle. Yeah, no worries. My voice is beginning to die on me, so I am going to call it there. I have a week off from my studies this week, so expect a bit of shoutcast spam incoming. Uh, there'll be more put up as the week goes on if I can find some decent games. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you got this far, it's been a long cast, and good night. Good night. <laughs>